Hi, everybody. <laughs> well, I, I'm just here to say hi. And if any of you are out there, please use the chat to say hi. Um, it's Monday morning, and I'm, I'm in general not a morning person or a Monday person, but uh, it's not exactly morning. And I have gotten my walk this morning. I've taken our dogs for a walk, and I've done my exercises. So anyways, thank you for joining me on this Monday. What, in addition to loving seeing what you guys are, you know, where you are, like tell me where you're from because I like to see where you're from. Jonah, Tours, Pratima, hi, Lisa. Hi, Tamiko. Hey, it's great to see you. Mary Knapp, oh my gosh, it's so awesome seeing you guys here. Okay, guys, so I, I number one, want to know, like, are, are you going to paint with me? Because that's what I want you to do. Um, I find Mondays kind of hard to get into motion. And so I look at doing these lives. If, if I do these on a Monday at a designated time and kind of let you go on going live, just let me know if you would like to do that. Okay, so D says yes. Um, I'd like to see a bunch of yeses if you guys want to paint with me. And we can even have little projects that we work on, you know, like, if you come on a Monday and you're not sure what you want to do, I could be working on a project and just say, hey, this is what I'm doing. Do you guys want to do it as well? Okay, great. Oh, from Poland. Hi, Chun. All the way from Poland. Okay, so Rotterdam. All right, Amsterdam. Iceland. See, this is what I get to know. It's like we're like this time zone. What, what time zone is good? Bonnie. Yay, Bonnie. Um, Rachel. I'm working on this large painting and if you guys have any questions as I work on it I'll just explain that it's uh, eight and a half feet by four and a half feet it's got extra like width and height so that I can stretch it because I do have a stretcher bar already um, ready to go and basically it's in its final stages this painting has gone through a lot of uh, layers and it's in acrylic and what I've really enjoyed about the process is that I started this in our Art and Success Pro group and we have like a live Zoom and paint day. And we're also following, we're actually doing some exercises together from this book. And we're finding that, you know, they're selective exercises. We're not going from the very beginning to the very end or anything like that. But what we're doing is uh, Tina Von Busick is one of our members and she has curated a lot of great exercises. But the main ones that we've been focusing on are uh, number one, automatic drawing, and that's when you just show up and you basically get out something to draw with, whether it's a pen or a marker or a pencil or paint or whatever it might be, and you just approach your paper, your canvas, your panel with just this not thinking attitude, and of course that's easy for me. Uh, I love to just, that's it's part of my process, I think, this automatic drawing. And for those who say, gosh, I need help loosening up, it's a wonderful approach. So number one, I highly recommend this book. It's by Stephen Imoni, and I will let you know that it's unfortunately out of print. If you're lucky, you might be able to find it. But I welcome you guys if you're here, and I kind of want to do this on a more regular basis. So if, you, if you'd like to paint with me, this is something I do with my pro members um, we paint for like seven hours a day once a month and it's just a time for sharing ideas and asking questions and showing what we're doing and you know you can kind of do anything you want and so the pain behind me started with uh, this exercise uh, that's in this book and it's basically circle triangle square and I started with circle triangle square and then I uh, it was in black paint acrylic and then I went over all those marks with white I knocked it out and then uh, very many processes, and I've got all that stuff uh, recorded, and I'll be sharing some of that uh, later uh, in a future video. But for right now, I just thought that I would um, go live, and hopefully some of you will have some questions for me. And I'm kind of in final stages, so what I'm doing is going to be a very slow process, and I'd love to see you and like to know what you're doing. The whole idea here would be to uh, do something together, so the idea, and this is what I do through my school, is i uh, got several courses, and they're all geared toward helping you step-by-step step in very incremental small steps 
that become almost second nature like driving or walking so that you feel less frustration. And that's kind of what it's all about is um, feeling comfortable with the painting processes and all that it has, you know it's going to give you, especially if you're a non-objective painter, you don't have an idea in your head to begin with. You just know that there will be some point where you're like at a crossroad. Do I go left or do I go right or do I go straight? Once you understand what it is you really know about yourself, and again, that's what uh, that's what I love to teach and coach is getting to know who you are personally, because that's what is going to go into your art. So like the painting behind me, this one is all about, I've gone very high key, which means very light value, but it certainly wasn't that way a few days ago. Um, it was actually more mid-tone, but then I decided that I wanted to feature like, yes, I want to feature movement and geometry, but I don't want to have too much chaos. I'm really going for a little bit more open space so that what remains is essentially, you know, the sense of geometry. And okay, so Monique has been watching Challenge 2, a certain obliterate, working on something now. Great. Thank you for sharing that. So a certain obliterate, as I was saying... <coughs> In this book, there are three exercises that we've been really focusing on. Okay, so like what she's doing on the cover, um, like if you ever feel it's hard for you to loosen up, then um, this, this type of exercise, and you don't need the book to be able to do this. It's great if you have it, of course, but if you don't have the book, notice what she's doing on the cover, okay? Um, obviously, it, it's mark making, but... Basically, what you do is you have something, um, it can be on the wall, it can be on a table, it can be on the floor. And you want to approach the surface um, without thinking. So without thinking is the key to automatic drawing and loosening up. And of course, I'm very good at that. I'm very good at not thinking. I don't want to think. Like, my problem is that I think too much. And uh, so I had to develop a process that worked for me. And essentially, I've been sharing my process with all the people I work with, and it seems to work for them as well. And I call that initial, like, don't think. Um, I call that play. And so that's what this person on the cover is doing. She's essentially playing and not thinking. So uh, the other question some people have is, well, if I, if I do this crazy thing, what if I'm a realist artist? Well, I think what I realized is that you can have a, um, a piece of paper or canvas panel, whatever it is, to play on does not necessarily mean you have to then paint over it. But what this um, practice does is it loosens you up. It allows you to let go of expectations. You're not thinking about the final product. You're just doing something. And doing something is better than doing nothing. So that's what this process now, in my case, if you look at, if you were to be able to look at the first layers of all of my work, um, you would find this at the very bottom. And some of it, you'll see it by the very end of the painting and some of it gets covered up. But the point is that I started and I don't have a blank canvas anymore. So that's one of the first um, exercises we do in this book. The second exercise is kind of like this as well. Um, you just assert, make a mark, but then you come back and you obliterate it. And as I've talked about in our pro membership, um, what I have uh, decided that that is a lot like is losing something that you might love, right? And in life, we, we, we do have a lot of loss, unfortunately, but we go through this process of we have people we love, we have things we love, um, we have pets we love that feeling of loss is part of life. And in our art, I've often heard people in, in the classes say, well, but you know, I, I really love that area and I can't lose it. But the exercise that we go through is to purposefully lose it. So you get used to losing things you love. Doing that in your art is very much like that happening in your life. And so I see the similarity between um, this assert and obliterate, which is what the exercise is called. Um, the more you can get used to losing things you love in your art, um, it's just one of those things that 
helps you to process loss, I think, in life. Um, that's definitely the feeling I get when I do that in these paintings. So, and then the third one is what this painting is. Um, you could say that it's part of, it's part of um, automatic drawing, it's part of a certain obliterate, but it's also then focusing on, well, what shapes should I use? So we focused on circle, triangle, square. Um, they're the most basic shapes that we learned in kindergarten. And um, by keeping the shapes simple, it's the process just invites you in. And, and in our group, like the amount of work that we've seen, not just the initial circle, triangle, square, but each person with their own personality has gone up into their own world and created like gorgeous finished works, nothing like mine, like theirs. And um, I think that's what's so beautiful about each of us has something very special to say and what's gonna help you be like the most special artist you possibly can be is um, I think reflecting on your own life and the past, the present, the future, um, it's all the little little things that made you so happy as a child or, you know, the memories you've had. And, of course, they're not all good. But the more you can um, use that as, like, your fountain of um, information and inspiration, it's just, it's just a wonderful thing to know that your art is really just an extension of you and everything, every experience you've lived, every smell you've ever had, every taste, every thing you've seen – 